In the town of Frankfurt, nestled among the busy streets, lived a man named Otto. An unassuming computer technician by day and a stargazer by night, Otto often found solace in the vastness of the cosmos. One fateful afternoon, while on a leisurely walk through the local park, he stumbled upon something that would create more questions than answers. A small, inconspicuous USB stick lying half buried in the dirt. Curiosity peaked, and the man picked up the USB stick and returned home. He plugged it into his computer, half expecting to find someone's forgotten family photos or mundane files. However, what he discovered defied all expectations. The USB stick contained a trove of photographs that seemed to belong to the realm of science fiction. As he scrolled through the images, Otto noticed that they depicted secret space missions, orbital stations, and landscapes of celestial bodies he had never seen before. Some photos showed astronauts in suits he didn't recognize, exploring landscapes on planets far from Earth. But what captured his attention most were the images of unidentified objects hovering above our planet. The photos were accompanied by cryptic notes, alluding to covert space missions, government secrecy, and a hidden cosmic narrative. Otto didn't know what to make of these images, but was aware that they carried the weight of unknown consequences. Wanting to find out more, Otto embarked on a quest to unravel the enigma behind the USB stick's contents. As he dove into research, he noted that he wasn't able to find out any more information about these mysterious photographs. After spending countless hours researching the images, Otto found himself caught in a web of theories, whistleblowers' testimonies, and shadowy organizations. He discovered that some of the photographs matched descriptions given by alleged insiders, further blurring the lines between reality and speculation. Otto said that his research led him to an underground network of truth-seekers and investigators, individuals who had dedicated their lives to uncovering the hidden truths of the cosmos. However, Otto said that these discoveries came with consequences and his personal life began to unravel as he became consumed by his pursuit. Friends grew distant, his job suffered, and he found himself being contacted by unknown numbers. As of right now, Otto said that these photographs sent him down a rabbit hole that opened his mind up to the world's truths. Interestingly, this isn't the first time that mysterious photographs have been uploaded online and many who've investigated these claims have said that secret space missions have been happening for years. The realm of space exploration has long captivated humanity's imagination, inspiring grand achievements and scientific breakthroughs. Yet, beyond the publicized missions and celebrated triumphs, a shadowy world of secret space missions exists, a domain cloaked in classified information and veiled by intrigue. Secret space missions exist on the periphery of official space exploration narratives. These missions, conducted by government agencies or military organizations, are shielded from public knowledge for a multitude of reasons, often tied to national security, defense research, espionage, or technological advancement. Operating in secrecy allows agencies to maintain an edge in strategic capabilities while preventing adversaries from exploiting vulnerabilities. Many secret space missions stem from a need to safeguard national security interests. Advanced reconnaissance satellites, for example, offer invaluable real-time intelligence on potential threats or adversaries. These orbiting sentinels can monitor troop movements, weapons development, and any activities that could affect a nation's safety. The secrecy surrounding such missions ensures that sensitive information remains protected. Secret space missions have played a pivotal role in advancing cutting-edge technologies that often find applications beyond space exploration. The research and development required for these missions can lead to breakthroughs in propulsion systems, communication technologies, miniaturized electronics, and advanced materials. Due to these leaks, it's caused some to question whether we are alone in the universe, and it's this question that has captivated human minds for centuries. As our understanding of the cosmos has deepened, so too has the realization that the universe is vast, teeming with countless stars and planets. This realization has given rise to the notion that we might not be alone, that advanced civilizations could theoretically abound in the cosmos. The Drake Equation, formulated by astrophysicist Frank Drake, 
attempts to estimate the number of detectable advanced civilizations in our galaxy. It takes into account factors such as the rate of star formation, the fraction of stars with planets, the number of habitable planets per star, the likelihood of life emerging, the development of intelligent life, and the capability to communicate across space. This equation suggests that the number of potential advanced civilizations could be substantial. The discovery of exoplanets, planets orbiting stars outside our solar system, has revolutionized our understanding of the cosmos. Many of these exoplanets lie within their star's habitable zone, where conditions might be conducive to the existence of liquid water, a crucial ingredient for life as we know it. With billions of stars in our galaxy alone, the sheer number of potentially habitable planets significantly increases the likelihood of advanced civilizations emerging. The Fermi paradox poses the question, if the universe is teeming with potential habitats for advanced civilizations, why have we not yet observed any signs of extraterrestrial life? There are various hypotheses to explain this paradox, including the possibility that advanced civilizations are rare, that they tend to self-destruct, or that they communicate in ways that we are not yet capable of detecting. However, the paradox also raises the notion that there could be factors we have not yet considered. The Copernican principle asserts that there is nothing special about Earth's position in the universe. In other words, the conditions that allowed for life on Earth are likely to exist elsewhere as well. This principle challenges the idea that Earth is unique and suggests that the emergence of life and advanced civilizations could be a natural consequence of the right conditions. The rapid technological advancements humanity has achieved in a relatively short span of time underscore the potential for other civilizations to develop advanced technologies. If we consider the exponential growth of our own technological capabilities, it stands to reason that civilizations that have evolved for much longer periods could have reached levels far beyond our own. Our understanding of life is based on our experiences on Earth, where life thrives in diverse environments and forms. If life can adapt and flourish in such a wide range of conditions, it suggests that advanced civilizations might come in forms radically different from what we envision. Our limitations in comprehending these alternative life forms could explain why we have not yet detected them. The age of the universe allows for vast cosmic timescales during which advanced civilizations could have arisen, evolved and disappeared. The universe's immense age offers ample opportunity for the emergence of advanced beings, especially if they possess the ability to sustain their societies over long periods. The concept of parallel development suggests that certain conditions necessary for the emergence of life and advanced civilizations might be universal. If these conditions are met, similar evolutionary pathways could occur on different planets, leading to the development of intelligence and technology. This idea implies that advanced civilizations could share common traits despite being separated by vast distances. One reason we may not have detected advanced civilizations is the vastness of interstellar distances. Even with advanced technologies, communicating across such expenses would pose challenges. Our current methods of communication, radio waves for instance, disperse over distance, making detection difficult. Advanced civilizations might use communication methods beyond our current comprehension. The concept of panspermia has ignited scientific curiosity and philosophical contemplation for centuries. The notion that life could be spread across the cosmos through celestial mechanisms challenges traditional ideas about the origin and distribution of life. The idea of panspermia dates back to ancient civilizations that speculated about life's origins and its potential dissemination throughout the universe. However, the modern scientific formulation of the theory can be attributed to the 5th century BC Greek philosopher Anaxagoras. He proposed that life's seeds could be transported through space, seeding other celestial bodies. Panspermia theory comes in several forms, each proposing different mechanisms for the transportation of life's building blocks or organisms across space. Lithopanspermia. This form suggests that life could be carried within rocks or meteorites, ejected from one planet or celestial body to another. These rocks could shield microorganisms from the harsh conditions of space and potentially deliver them to hospitable environments where they could thrive. Radiopanspermia. 
high-energy radiation could propel microscopic particles, including microorganisms, into space. The energy from cosmic rays or solar radiation could dislodge these particles from a planet's surface, launching them on journeys through space. Directed panspermia. This variation of the theory posits that intelligent civilizations could deliberately send life-forming molecules or even microorganisms to other planets. This concept raises ethical questions about the potential impact of introducing alien life to new environments. Gravitational panspermia. Gravitational interactions between celestial bodies, such as planets or moons, could lead to the exchange of material. Microbes or organic molecules could hitch a ride on comets or asteroids, which might then collide with other planets. Panspermia suggests that the seeds of life could be present in the form of microbial life or even complex organic molecules. Microbes, known for their resilience in extreme environments, could survive the harsh conditions of space, including vacuum, radiation and extreme temperatures. Organic molecules, essential for the emergence of life, could be transported within icy grains or the interstellar medium itself. While direct evidence for panspermia remains elusive, researchers have identified microorganisms' potential to survive the rigors of space in laboratory experiments. Additionally, the discovery of complex organic molecules in meteorites and the detection of amino acids in interstellar dust provide tantalizing hints that the building blocks of life might indeed travel through space. Panspermia raises intriguing questions about the origin of life on Earth. If life's seeds were delivered from elsewhere, it might explain the rapid emergence of life after the conditions on Earth became suitable. Panspermia doesn't answer the question of life's ultimate origin, but shifts the focus to the possibility of life's formation elsewhere in the universe. Panspermia has profound implications for the search for advanced life. The theory suggests that life could exist in places previously deemed inhospitable. For instance, extremophiles on Earth provide examples of how life can survive in extreme environments, offering potential analogues for conditions on other planets. Beyond the confines of our solar system, panspermia could extend to the interstellar realm. The notion of life-bearing objects traveling between star systems challenges our understanding of the potential for life to colonize not only planets within our own galaxy, but also those in distant galaxies. The deliberate introduction of life to other planets, as proposed in directed panspermia, raises ethical concerns. Introducing alien organisms to ecosystems could disrupt existing ecological balances and potentially lead to unintended consequences. Panspermia connects life's journey with the cosmic ballet of celestial bodies, revealing the intricate interplay between the universe's components. It blurs the boundaries between individual planets, stars and galaxies, suggesting that life's story is woven into the fabric of the cosmos itself. As of right now, panspermia, with its diverse forms and implications, offers a tantalizing perspective on the origin, distribution and potential prevalence of life in the universe. While it remains a theoretical concept, Panspermia challenges us to rethink the boundaries of life and the mechanisms that might have enabled its journey across the cosmos. As our understanding of exoplanets, astrobiology and the intricacies of space exploration deepens, the exploration of panspermia continues to inspire wonder and curiosity about life's cosmic odyssey. In the vast expanse of space, the moon has always captivated the human imagination. Among the many lunar mysteries, the discovery of a peculiar tower on the far side of the moon by a Soviet spacecraft stands out. In July 1965, the Soviet spacecraft Zond-3 embarked on a historic journey, becoming the first mission to capture images of the far side of the moon. Zond-3 successfully transmitted photographs, revealing previously unseen terrain on the lunar surface. However, among the images, one stood out an intriguing tower-like structure perched on the moon's far side. The tower discovered by Zond 3 remains a topic of speculation and debate. The photographs captured a large tower-like formation rising from the lunar surface. Its distinctive shape and apparent structure have ignited curiosity and inspired countless theories about its origins and purpose. The enigmatic tower on the far side of the moon has generated various theories and speculations. 
Zond 3 was meant to reach Mars, and photographing the far side of the moon was a secondary objective for the spacecraft. Scientists equipped the Zond 3 with extremely useful technologies, equipping the spacecraft with two cameras, infrared and ultraviolet spectrometers, a magnetometer, a cosmic ray detector, a solar particle detector, and a meteoroid detector. Zond 3 made its way to the moon 33 hours after being launched on July 18, 1965. Just as it passed the far side of the moon, its cameras started exploring the far side of Earth's satellite focusing on the 30% that its predecessor, Luna 3, had missed, taking one picture every 2 minutes and 15 seconds for a total period of 1 hour and 8 minutes. After a period of 9 days from taking the images, Zond 3 transmitted these images back to the Soviet operators on Earth. These images were the first of their kind and helped scientists discover several geological formations present on the far side of the Moon. However, one of these images particularly intrigued the researchers and those interested in the unknown. On the far side of the moon, a puzzling tower-like structure is visible in one of the images taken. The structure stands out as there is no other similar formation in its vicinity. The image is believed by researchers to be compelling proof for their theory of possible advanced structures on Earth's moon. As of right now, very little information has been released about the structure. Interestingly enough, this isn't the first time that mysterious monoliths have been found throughout our solar system, and it's for this reason that researchers have suggested that they could be evidence of advanced life. Some propose natural explanations, suggesting that the formation may be a result of geological processes or impact crater remnants. Despite the intrigue, many scientists approach the tower with skepticism. They argue that the tower-like appearance may be an illusion caused by lighting conditions shadows, or pixelation in the Zond 3 images. They emphasize the need for further exploration and comprehensive data to provide a clearer understanding of the lunar terrain. The discovery of the tower on the far side of the moon has fueled the ongoing quest for knowledge about our celestial neighbor. As space exploration continues to advance, upcoming missions aim to uncover more secrets hidden within the moon's unexplored regions. These missions, equipped with advanced technology and instruments, hold the potential to provide more detailed observations and insights into the lunar mysteries. Dr. Gordon Gallup says alien life may be too scared of dangerous humans. The idea that we are not alone in the universe has paved the way for some of the best science fiction films and fueled many conspiracy theories. The odds are that there must be life out there, perhaps more advanced than us. So, if that is the case, why haven't these aliens reached out? Dr. Gordon Gallup, a biopsychologist, has suggested that the existence of alien life is not implausible, but that the reason we have not heard from the alternate life forms out there is that they could be afraid of us, the dangerous and violent humans. Dr. Gordon Gallup, who works at the University of Albany, presents the view that the awful acts us humans take out against one another, not to mention our planet, might be keeping aliens at bay. If they can see what we are like as a species, why would they want to reveal their presence? Gallup calls us humans, quote, violent and dangerous, citing our many and constant conflicts as a reason to be too afraid to let us discover them. He says, if there is intelligent life elsewhere, they may view humans as extremely dangerous. We pose too great a risk and they do not want to be discovered. The point Gallup makes was published in the Journal of Astrobiology and he is not sugarcoating our awful impact on the world. He was clear that the impact of the planet and our own societies are far too destructive to appeal to extraterrestrial guests. His argument is that if there is intelligent life out there, they certainly are not likely to visit Earth. Gallup's idea that we are scaring aliens away is a new twist in the warnings we have been given before. Scientists, most notably the late great astrophysicist Stephen Hawking, famously had concerns should we ever interact with aliens. He agreed it was likely there was intelligent alien life out there, describing people who claimed we were the only intelligent life form as arrogant. He thought it was us who had a cause for concern, not them. He likened the arrival of aliens on Earth to the arrival of Christopher Columbus first making it to America.
which, as we know, had a truly tragic impact upon the indigenous populations already in America. He believes any intelligent life that is far more evolved than us would have little concern in taking over our lands and home for their own gain, quite the opposite view to Gallup. Whether you believe it is us for whom an alien encounter would end badly or for the aliens themselves, both scientists seem to agree that we should not go looking for any alien buddies anytime soon. Scientists document triple star system Because the ability to peer deeply into space and record accurate measurements is a new technological advancement, there have not been very many instances where scientists have been able to track the progress of a celestial body across more than a few decades. Recently, a team was able to document the history of a triple star system called HS Hydra across 125 years, which enabled them to come up with enough of a comprehensive history that they were able to predict the likely future of the system. The team was able to accomplish this by looking at the first ever observations of HS Hydra, which were recorded all the way back in 1893, when all that would have been visible was the twinkling of yet another star in the night sky. As technology advanced and we were able to obtain more detail about this specific twinkling star, it became very evident that this was a dynamic system with more than a few surprises in store. And now, scientists hope to be able to further unravel the mysteries of this system by employing NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, which has previously been used to hunt for alien worlds but will now be turned towards the discovery of hidden mysteries within binary star systems and the three-star system HS Hydra. But what makes HS Hydra so special and mysterious? For starters, it stands out from typical dynamic binary star systems due to the simple fact that, in 2012, Astronomers observing the well-studied system with fresh eyes noticed that it was composed of three stars instead of two, and these stars blink in and out as eclipses viewable from Earth. Long before this fascinating fact was known, early astronomers were recording and immortalizing HS Hydra. In fact, the first images of it were taken in 1893 and had to be captured on glass plates that were changed out in the dark of night. From that point on, HS Hydra was frequently documented using both glass plate photography and logbook entries recording original observations from early astronomers. Today, even without including the glass plates, whose images have been compromised over time, over 1,000 images and observations remain to include within the timeline of this system. The history is so complete that researchers working on the project even described it as a time machine telescope looking back into the past. Because of this amazing history that researchers and scientists were able to compile, we now have a thorough understanding of the history of HS Hydra, which will hopefully allow us to peer into the future of the three-star system using the observations of TESS. Never has such complete history been able to be observed, and astronomers are thrilled about the possibilities for research and knowledge that might lie within the mysteries of this system. Nearly 1,000 mysterious strands revealed in Milky Way's center. One of the most exciting things about space is that we know we cannot see everything that lies beyond our atmosphere. This means that every time a new technological advancement is made in telescope, satellite or imaging technology, we get to learn about and discover a bit more of the space around us. Four decades ago, Farhad Yusufzadeh, a researcher at Northwestern University was able to utilize radio wavelength observations to capture stunning images of the mysterious center of the Milky Way that revealed strange cosmic ray electrons organized in magnetic one-dimensional strands stretching up to 150 light-years long. In the intervening decades, very little progress has been made in the discovery of what exactly these strands do and how they could have ended up there. A recent image taken from Saro's Meerkat telescope has been able to illuminate this mysterious region in a new light at last. Revealed in crisp detail are almost 1,000 strange strands dangling in space, paired or clustered, and spaced fairly regularly in a stacked formation amidst the radio emissions of surrounding cosmic events. 
Researchers working on the project were able to generate this image, which could very likely revolutionize the way that we view the ambiguous area at the center of the Milky Way by creating a mosaic of images taken from the Meerkat telescope at 20 different locations, all aiming towards the center. This technique generated a panoramic image with the background removed that left only a startlingly clear view of the strands, which will allow for an amazing amount of further study as scientists attempt to unravel the mysteries surrounding these strange strands at the center of the Milky Way. But how do they hope to accomplish such a monumental task? For starters, the team of researchers is focused on gathering as much statistical data as possible about the strands, which they currently believe to be related to earlier activity of the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way, to detect any key variations among the particles, as well as to get a general idea of their properties. Additionally, they want to get a better understanding of the magnetic fields and cosmic rays surrounding the strands, which indicate that many of them likely do not share the same origin. To do this, each individual filament must first be carefully identified and catalogued. Another important element of the image is the fact that researchers will now be able to clearly observe the strands along with the passage of time and will be able to determine whether the strange filaments are constant or evolving. Although it seems that this image created more questions than answers, it acted as a door to amazing knowledge regarding the mysteries that lie at the center of the Milky Way, and hopefully many more answers will be revealed through the course of time. Lost continents beneath Antarctica unveiled in old satellite. Sometimes the newest discoveries can come from the most unlikely places. A satellite that is no longer in use was able to point researchers towards ancient continents that were yet to be discovered. This was after old data underwent a new analysis. The Gravity Field and Steady State Ocean Circulation Explorer, or GOCE, mission's data was analyzed again in 2018 nine years after its initial launch. The second look over this data has shown cratons in the lithosphere. This essentially means that in between the mantle and crust of Earth, there are some rocky areas that we had not guessed were there. Scientists seem to believe that the cratons or rocky areas that have been found are leftover structures that had formed ancient continents, and further research into them could provide an insight into how the continents we know today are composed. An official statement made from those involved in the study at the European Space Agency explained the potential for a modern application of this research and how it may particularly aid our understanding of Antarctica due to its close proximity. The co-author of the research paper, Fausto Faraccioli, and science leader of geology and geophysics at the British Antarctic Survey described Antarctica's composition as an exciting mosaic of geological features. He goes on to explain that throughout East Antarctica, there is an observable array of similarities that can be seen in the Antarctic crust and the crust of the continents it was once joined to 160 million years ago. The GOCE satellite was in orbit between March 2009 and November 2013 before it was declared not working. Satellites are built to have a short lifespan at the moment, between 5 and 15 years, as designing them with longevity in mind is a complex task, due to the inconsistency in solar arrays or simply running out of fuel. When active, GOCE was built to observe changes, fluctuations and variations in the gravity on Earth, no matter how minuscule they may have appeared. The data collected produced a worldwide global gravity map. It also revealed that there were local changes in gravity, with a small resolution of 80 kilometers. The new analyses unearthed the ancient continents when a map of shape indexes was created by researchers at the British Antarctic Survey and Kiel University. When making this research more accessible, the European Space Agency compared the space indexes to contours you might see on a map. Jörg Ebbing, a geophysicist working with Kiel University in Germany, elaborated on the necessity of looking at both the gravitational data and the seismological data simultaneously in order to ensure more consistency and accuracy when producing images of both the crust and upper mantle of the Earth. Creating these images and 3D modeling is necessary for researchers to do if they want to understand the mechanics behind how plate tectonics and the deep mantle interact. 
The next step in this research is to see how the ancient continents are impacting modern-day Antarctica and how climate change could affect these ancient continents in their dormant state. Researchers hope the gravity gradients which have been freshly scoured through can help find some answers. The discovery of ancient continents and gravitational variations is certainly not a simplistic field of study, but one with great promise and an exciting future ahead of it. A Belgian farmer accidentally moves the border of France. We tend to believe that country borders are, in our modern time, set in stone, but apparently this is not the case, as a Belgian farmer managed to spark controversy by re-establishing the French border. When an enthusiastic historian was walking in the forest between the two countries, he noticed that the stone, which symbolised the boundary between Belgium and France, had been moved a whole 7.5 feet. It turned out that a nearby farmer moved the stone because it was in the path of his tractor, unaware of the importance of the stone and, with the stone, he moved the entire portion of France's border. For the most part, both the Belgian and French populations have been able to laugh about the situation, although state officials are somewhat antsy over the move. The slightest move of a border brings with it tons of paperwork and establishments to sort out. The current border spans 620 kilometers, and the border was established in 1820 after Napoleon's infamous Waterloo defeat. The stone's original placement dates back to 1819, when the border was initially planned out. The mayor of the Belgian town where the border lies commented on the matter jovially. I was happy, my town was bigger, but the mayor of the French town opposite the border, boussigny sur was less amused. All those involved agreed on one thing, however, that a border conflict ought to be avoided. Currently, the plan is to make the Belgian authorities contact the farmer and have him return the stone to its original location. Though, if that does not happen, the case will be taken to the Foreign Ministry of Belgium and might cause another Franco-Belgian conflict, with the farmer risking criminal charges if he refuses to comply. The Treaty of Kotlik is a historical event of importance that is responsible for the formation of the border. There are several smaller treaties involved under it, signed by France back in the 19th century, but these treaties failed to solve all the Franco-Belgian problems of the territory. For the next few years, from 1820 until 1825, the French and Belgian people argued over the border's exact positioning. Borders of the 19th century, in general, were a thing of nightmares. With countless revamps, especially when it came to French borders with rivers bursting or rerouting, which, in turn, required revised border discussions with the neighbouring nations. The borders had to move again after the 1914 to 1918 conflict, when Alsace-Lorraine was returned from Germany under the Treaty of Versailles, which prompted debates of whether the Franco-Belgian border should also be re-established, but the discussion was abandoned soon thereafter. It is fortunate that Belgium and France have such a great political social relationship because there have been reports of locals moving and even vandalising other countries' border landmarks as symbols of rebellion between neighbouring nations with poor social political connections. The fact that both France and Belgium took the accidental movement of the border in comedic stride helps avoid conflict, but there is always the potential for future problems. As much as we like to believe we handle things better than leaders of our past, it is easy to fall into a conflict with other countries regarding borders and civil rights. Rare 1500-year-old painting of Jesus Christ found in an abandoned church in the Israeli desert. Whether you attend church regularly as a practicing Christian or your views of the religion have been shaped from the media or primary school church visits, Many people have an image as to what Jesus looks like, ingrained in their minds. However, a painting from 1500 years ago may call that image into question. The Western media, in modern society and historically, Jesus Christ is often presented with long hair and a beard, among other traits. However, an early painting discovered in an ancient Israeli church presents a vastly different image. A team of archaeologists from the University of Haifa in Israel stumbled across this painting whilst conducting research in the Negev desert, in the ruins of a Byzantine farming village. Emma Mayan Fenar, an art historian from the university, was present upon the discovery of the church painting. In an interview with Haaretz, 
an Israeli newspaper, she made this statement. I was there at the right time, at the right place, with the right angle of light, and suddenly I saw eyes, she continues, explaining that the image depicts Jesus at his baptism. Despite the classic Western expectations for Jesus to be portrayed as bearded with long hair, at no point do the Gospels offer a description of Jesus Christ. Furthermore, no known description exists in work developed later on. Instead, this popular image of Jesus, or rather any image seen, is an artistic interpretation and vision. Mayan Fanar said, when speaking to Haaretz, that in the past, Jesus has been shown with many different appearances, long hair, short hair, with a beard, without a beard, to name just a few variations. Apparently, by the 6th century, the image of Christ with long flowing locks and a beard had been shown as the most consistent representation, an image that has continued in Western cultures even into the 21st century. The image found in Israel is not overly clear, with sun exposure having impeded the clarity of the artwork. It holds rough outlines and small smears of colour, though many details have not stood the test of time since its estimated creation in the 6th century. The team of archaeologists say the church's image of Jesus shows him to have short curly hair, a prolonged face, large eyes and an elongated nose. According to the work published by the team in the journal Antiquity, it was fairly common for Christ to be represented as having short hair throughout Egypt and Syro-Palestine. However, this convention seemingly disappeared from the later Byzantine art. One reason for this is that during the early 8th century, it was outlawed to create religious images. This was one aspect of what would later be named the iconoclastic controversy, in which lots of Christians in the Byzantine Empire considered the creation of religious art equal to the worship of icons. This was illegal and prohibited by Emperor Leo III in 726 AD and remained as such until the mid-9th century. This adds to the value of this discovery, highlighting the rarity of an Israeli depiction of Christ in this time period. While we have no answers as to the true appearance of Christ, it certainly is fascinating to understand why certain depictions have arisen and become more popularized when they may just be deemed less accurate or on par with often unseen interpretations of Jesus. This interesting discovery is certainly an intriguing discussion point into modern understandings of religion. In 2021, a massive object described as a black triangle was seen hovering above a military installation in California. The sighting was documented on six separate videos and witnessed by 50 U.S. Marines. In April 2021, an officer at Camp Wilson in 29 Palms captured an image of a striking object with lights on its sides in the desert mountains. The object, which appeared to be in a triangular shape, remained stationary for 10 minutes, as attested by witnesses. Between 8.24 p.m. and 8.30 p.m., videos captured by several Marines show what appears to be a mysterious object hovering in the dark sky. Many of the Marines believe that the object was a craft based on the lights visible in the footage. At 8.29 p.m., a video captured soldiers firing a flare into the air as an effort to illuminate an object that displayed five red lights. Prior to being fully illuminated, the black triangle abruptly disappeared, without leaving any evidence. Shortly after the incident, the military personnel reported that a significant number of trucks and several helicopters immediately headed to the specified site on the base. The helicopters continued to fly over the area until approximately 11.30 p.m. that evening. Witnesses provided a varying range of estimates for the size of the unidentified object, with some stating it was as large as a stealth bomber, having a length of over 170 feet while others claimed its size to be approximately half that of a football field. Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp, respected journalists, have obtained a collection of media that includes six separate film recordings from two distinct viewpoints, along with a related photograph. This material has been made available through their podcast, Weaponized, as part of their latest coverage. A former sergeant by the name of Mr. Mitchell reported that he had served in the United States Army for over a decade but said that nothing could have prepared him for what he was about to witness. Hearing about this strange object, he went on to detail that he had seen something similar while serving in the United States military. He details that it was a clear evening and the base was relatively calm. 
He and his fellow soldiers were going about their routine tasks, when suddenly a strange object made itself visible over the horizon. As he looked up, all he could see was a massive triangular object hovering silently above the base. He described the craft as having a sleek, metallic exterior, and that it was black in color. As the mysterious triangle hovered in the sky, the soldiers around Sergeant Mitchell began to notice it too. Everyone's attention turned towards the sky, and there was a mix of awe, confusion, and a sense that they were witnessing something unknown. Sergeant Mitchell reported that he had heard stories and rumors of unidentified objects, but witnessing one firsthand was an entirely different experience. He couldn't tear his eyes away from the incredible sight unfolding before him. The triangular object remained stationary for a few moments before it suddenly shot across the sky with astonishing speed, disappearing into the night. The soldiers stood there, speechless, trying to comprehend what they had just witnessed. Sergeant Mitchell said that soldiers often report seeing these mysterious triangles and that the event that he witnessed left them with a sense of wonder and a myriad of unanswered questions. As per the footage captured by Marines' smartphone cameras, it seems that there were five lights arranged in a triangular pattern. The event shares similarities with the famous Phoenix Lights incident from 1997, where a massive triangular object was sighted above the city of Phoenix, Arizona. Witnesses, including the governor at the time, reported the incident, saying that the object was able to hover in the sky without making a sound. During the 2021 occurrence, a mortarman stationed at Camp Wilson spoke with Corbell and captured a photo of an object with his smartphone that had high exposure, which displayed the object's outline. The item seems to have a triangular shape, encircled by lights that are equally spaced around its periphery in a pattern resembling the letter V. The individual in charge of operating the mortar, whose identity is being kept secret by news outlets, recounted that one of his associates observed the item manifest out of thin air. He said that a friend of theirs was outside and noticed that lights suddenly appeared in the sky. This intrigued them, and their curiosity led to over 50 people gathering to observe the phenomenon. The lights seemingly emerged out of thin air without any prior warning. Although the Marines had military experience, they were unable to identify the vessel, and their reaction was one of bewilderment. The individual operating the camera, who was in charge of videotaping and capturing images of the entity, remarked that upon close inspection of the visuals, one can easily spot a triangular form painted in black color. The soldier said that based on their photograph featuring a black triangular structure below the lights, it is clear that the object cannot be attributed to any common aerial phenomena, such as flares or illumination rounds. According to the witness, the object in question appeared to remain in the same position for around 10 minutes. A fellow Marine, whose identity has been kept confidential, served as an artilleryman at the base and witnessed the unidentified object. He vehemently denied that the lights could be explained by illumination rounds discharged by artillery or any other ordinary explanation that he may have been familiar with. He described the sighting as an unprecedented event. The object's color, size and illumination greatly varied from anything they've seen before. To illustrate, he mentioned that illumination rounds are typically fired in the air and then dropped, but this object's lighting was distinct. He said that there were five objects grouped together that appeared to have a red hue, while their lighting was a yellow-white shade. The member of the artillery unit analogized the dimensions of the unidentified object to those of a stealth bomber, whereas the individual responsible for operating the mortar system characterized it as comparable to the area covered by a three-bedroom residence. Another observer who conversed with Corbell likened its magnitude to being roughly 50% of that of a typical football pitch. According to witnesses, during the incident, they also observed strange lights moving around the unidentified object, which can be seen in the video, but are not very clear. The Marines captured one of the videos of the object and eventually fired illumination rounds over it. However, prior to the object being illuminated, it abruptly vanished. According to a mortarman's account, he saw two orange-colored lights, which he later identified as illumination rounds, hover above the triangle before it abruptly vanished leaving the sky pitch black. Shortly after, helicopters swiftly rushed toward the area and began circling it. According to the artilleryman, 
he observed a fleet of more than 60 military vehicles accompanying the helicopters on their journey to the site. They said that following the event, helicopters were observed flying in circular patterns for a considerable amount of time, alongside a large convoy of around 60 trucks. According to Corbell's conversation with the experienced mortarman, the unidentified object sighted by the latter was not connected to the United States military in any way. The government conducted a search after the object vanished, implying a certain level of interest. So, what do you make of these photographs and the mysterious black triangles? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Thank you.